Thank you, Judge. This is the time set for a status conference and not another hearing in the matter of ICAP Enterprises, Inc., case number 23-01243. On behalf of the debtors, we have Julian Green. I'm looking out and, and you know, t- taking your d- detail, maybe I'm the guy that's doing this and, you know, seeing if we can narrow Good morning. Down. This is the bankruptcy court. And ultimately, Somebody just call you know, land for the approval or something like that, so. I'm going to go for that. We'll start over. On behalf of the debtors, we have Julian Guruli. Good morning, Your Honor. And Khaled Tarasi. Good morning, Your Honor. On behalf of the creditors committee, we have Jay Cornfield. Good morning, Your Honor. Gary Dyer, Assistant U.S. Trustee. Good morning, Your Honor. On behalf of Serene Investments, we have Guy Macro. Good morning, Your Honor. CRO for the debtors, Lance Miller. Good morning, Your Honor. And creditor, and creditor Tracy Smith. Good morning, Your Honor. Is there anyone else on this call that I did not identify? Thank you. This hearing is being recorded. Please proceed. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing well today. Um, so we're here for our periodic uh, on the Bacterian status conference. I've reviewed the status conference reports um, that the debtors filed yesterday afternoon. As uh, the report correctly notes, we don't have any motions or applications set for hearing today. Um, we want to just briefly chat about the O'Melveny employment application, and then I think we need to cover some scheduling, and um, that's really it for this morning. But, uh, Mr. Dooley, why don't I hear from you if there are any um, kind of uh, points on which the debtors would like to elaborate beyond what was in the uh, status report. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. For the record, Julian Garuli of O'Melveny and Myers for the debtors. Proposed counsel, I should say, for the debtors. Your Honor, uh, that was largely my list. I could, um, I think, uh, if the court uh, would indulge me, um, look, I'll provide a bit of a case status update, although it'll be brief along the lines uh, today as the as the status report was. Your Honor, um, as we mentioned the last time we were in front of you, um, and now uh, even, even more so, we do anticipate that the debtors will be filing a number of motions and related documents. I will tell you, Your Honor, very shortly. Um, today, um, I submit that it's in the best interest of the state not to speak uh, with, with really any level of specificity regarding coming attractions, but uh, they, they will be coming soon. Uh, as Your Honor has heard throughout the case, we've been on the debtor side working in very close coordination with the creditors committee, Mr. Kornfeld, Mr. Bender, uh, the team at, at B. Riley uh, have been really fantastic. And as I said, we've been working really hand in glove with them. They are fully apprised uh, and supportive uh, of the debtor's efforts. I mean, Mr. Cornfield can obviously speak for himself. Um, and I would also like to just report, um, Your Honor, that Mr. Miller and I did meet in person a couple of weeks ago in Seattle with the members of the Creditors Committee and had a really productive afternoon meeting with them on uh, a host of issues, uh, some of which I think the court will see very shortly. Um, and I think laid a really strong foundation going forward in this case. Um, remember, that's sort of my general case update um, in brief. Uh, I do have on my list, Your Honor, the O'Melveny retention application. Uh, we, we did not receive any formal objections or, or really informal objections. Mr. Dyer did have a question that we're following up on. I confirmed with him just a moment ago that he doesn't object to entry of the employment order while we run down um, the answer to his question. But I have that, and then I do know Mr. Tarazi has some updates on the real estate uh, liquidation front, including um, hearing dates and then upcoming auctions. And then, uh, Your Honor, I, I would agree that it probably makes sense to talk about scheduling um, uh, dates that are convenient for the court. Thank you. 
Very good. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lee. Um, Ms. Cornfield, any uh, high-level comments from the uh, committee this morning? Uh, thank you, I uh, just want to confirm what Mr. Greeley has shared. Um, the committee, this council, and, and to a large extent the members have been directly in, in communication and coordination with uh, the debtors, um, CRO's team, with council, et cetera, um, in working through, uh, as Mr. Greeley um, advertises, a, a collection of, of fairly significant matters that we all anticipate being before you shortly. Um, it's a, in some respects a joint motion, in some respects they're not, but um, it, it is very much a, um, a group effort and a coordinated effort. <clears throat> um, I think that the, uh, the, the committee is, continues to be um, focused on speed and uh, efficiency, and, and we're working hard with the rest of the professionals and the, the group to make sure that we uh, have our eyes on that. Um, appreciate the CRO and his team's uh, inclusion of the committee subsequently in a number of the things that you will see come before you. So I, I pretty much everything I have the honor unless you have questions for me. Um, I don't. Thank you, Mr. Kornfeld, and I'm pleased to hear that uh, the debtors are working collaboratively with the committee. Uh, Chapter 11 always works best um, when uh, Parties collaborate as appears to be the case. Here, I'm uh, glad to hear that uh, happening. And, uh, it, it is, John. I might even I might just add that the you know the overarching theme of, of the work that we've done as as professionals and and, um, and clients in this case really has focused on the fact that we've got a significant group of investors as we've talked about at the inception of the case, 1800 that are in the neighborhood of a quarter of a billion dollars that are, are really the, the parties that we're all working to, um, to generate recovery for. And, and so it's a fairly unitary focus that way, and it's made it, um, I think, much much clearer to all of us how we should be running the case, and we do appreciate it. Very good. Uh, thank you, Mr. Grenfell. Um, all right, so briefly on the Omelvany um, employment application, um, I did just want to heard from Mr. Dyer this morning. I saw that there was a declaration of non-opposition filed earlier today, um, and there wasn't any formal um, response. Um, I did want to get Mr. Dyer's thoughts. I thought it would be important to note for the record that, and just confirm my understanding that the O'Melveny firm has agreed for this engagement to discount it, the normally hourly rate that would apply for Mr. Lilly, I, I believe, by 10%. Um, and I assume for the duration of the case, and uh, my inference is that that results from the fact that the general O'Melveny rate structures, you know, higher um, than the than the book call to firm's rate structure so that the discount I assume is to reduce some of the step up that would result from the same employee uh, the same attorney changing firms. But um, Mr. Willie, did I understand that aspect of the application correctly? For the record, Julian Gurley, yes, Your Honor. Uh, so that 10% discount from my new regular hourly rate. Um, the only thing I would reserve, and not to look too far ahead here, is end of February, but um, I think that 10% discount, uh, we didn't lay it out in the application, but I would assume that would, and I would commit on the record, that that would be for subsequent years if we have you know, more years in this case, uh, but subject to if there's an annual step up, which I'm not, I guess that's familiar with when that happens at a nominee, but um, it, it, the rate would step up, but still be discounted by 10%, if that makes sense, Your Honor. It does, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Julie. I, I, I just wanted to make sure I understood that correctly and that um, parties to the case had, had appreciated that aspect of the application. Um, Mr. Dyer, I'd be happy to hear from you. I know you didn't file anything, but if you have any comments or observations you'd like to put on the record today. Um, no, uh, nothing beyond the fact, Your Honor, that we have had a conversation about um, watching the duplication of services, um, just to say it out loud, and, and they, the debtors council are very aware of that, and so is Mr. Kornfeld and his group uh, also do not want to see duplication as well, so I think that that's clearly been stated. And the other item that Mr. Gurley 
referred to a uh, question about O'Melveny's uh, conflicts checks will will be, I think, answered shortly. And if there's anything that comes up, we will bring it before the court. And if not, then there just may be silence without anything further in the record if there isn't any um, issue that arises. So I, I think it's well in hand, Your Honor, and I don't have an objection under the present circumstances, formal or informal, to uh, the court proceeding on the only Albany employment application. Very good. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dyer. Um, well, the court certainly is prepared to uh, grant that application, as I've said in other cases. It's my general view that parties in bankruptcy cases, including debtors and official committees, are entitled to retain counsel of their cho choosing, and that counsel um, generally is entitled to be compensated um, at the hourly rates that the market will bear for um, the same attorneys out of court matters or um, matters in other cases. I'm not uh, a subscriber to the view um, that a a attorneys need to be shoved into the so called regional rates, and I know we dealt with that issue in the uh, Easter Day case. Um, I appreciate the concession that O'Melveny made in this case with the voluntary discount. I do think um, that's makes some sense and is appropriate given given that it's uh, Mr. Gooley, the same attorney, um, who would, if he had stayed at the duck halter firm would likely have a lower hourly rate. But uh, um, So I appreciate some of that being uh, mitigated by the O'Melveny firm. Um, I was going to reiterate the same point that uh, Ms. Dyer made, which is in every case where um, multiple law firms are employed um, to represent the same client, there's always some inherent possibility for uh, duplication of efforts, so I, I agree it's important to, that the parties um, make reasonable efforts to avoid that here, um, and also just to make sure that uh, particular tasks are being delegated to appropriate timekeepers um, with our, the timekeepers charging hourly rates that are commensurate with the work that's being done. Um, that, again, can sometimes be challenging when there are two multiple law firms working together, um, but I'm, I'm sure uh, the debtors, Paladin, and uh, the O'Melveny Buckhalter law firms, as well as the individual lawyers, appreciate all of that. And I trust if there's an issue at all, um, Ms. Dyer or the creditors committee um, or another economic stakeholder will bring it to the court's attention. Um, but subject to those comments, yeah. I'm happy, happy to approve that application. Your Honor, Jake committee, if I could just add one thought, if you don't mind. Um, of course. <clears throat> Um, Mr. Gould and I had conversations. He was very communicative about this change before it occurred, and we appreciated that. And um, you know, we're, we're pleased for him um, that he was able to move to a firm that um, is going to fit what he's doing in his career. Um, the one thing that, <clears throat> that is a little bit different than a duplication um, issue that we've identified, and you know, I think we all share that. <clears throat> Mr. Gould has been very responsible and communicative on these issues including the one I'm about to raise, which is <clears throat> there has been a tremendous amount of, of investment and um, institutional knowledge and, and uh, kind of diligence, if you will, by the Buckholder firm in terms of the work that they've done prior to Mr. Dooley moving over to a melody. And we've talked with Mr. Dooley about the committee's view that we do want to see um, you know, Buck Holter staying involved with respect to the matters that it has developed its expertise and its, its um, sort of cash of knowledge, if you will, so that there's not any uh, re education cost um, <clears throat> in moving certain matters over to another. And then, uh, I'm, I'm simply saying what Mr. Gillette and I have talked about, it's nothing new, it's just a slightly different take on the duplication issue in terms of, of not recreating the wheel. And, there's, there's clear agreement and consensus that that's how Mr. Drury has this case going forward. Not to say that I'm not going to do more work on this matter, um, but, but to the extent possible, he and another CLO have their eyes on making sure that we all take advantage of the investment in the Buckholzer um, firm to date in terms of, of the matters that have been um, uh, generated and, and developed. Uh, so I just wanted to add that that view from the community to kind of fill out some of the conversations and thoughts that we've all had on this particular issue. Thank you, Mr. Kornfeld. That um, makes perfect sense to the court and really the value of continuity, both in um, Mr. Ruley being able to continue on the case 
um, as, as the point person as he's been, and also, as you said, maintaining the uh, um, continuity of value that the uh, buck halter firm adds um, makes perfect sense to the court. So um, I'm glad, uh, glad, glad you've had a discussion with, about that and appreciate your views. So. Okay, um, so I think the main remaining task for today is just pinning down some scheduling. Um, we do have, we have a hearing set on March 4th at 10 o'clock a.m. relating to the uh, 10 more sale motion. Um, I know the bid deadline for that um, doesn't run until next week and the objection deadline doesn't run until next week. So I suspect uh, no one can say with certainty today whether we'll need that hearing, um, but I'd be happy to hear um, Mr. Trozzi, if there are any updates about that sale motion or what the debtors anticipate or um, your, your views on that particular uh, hearing date. Thank you, Your Honor. Callan Trozzi of Buckhalter, <coughs> excuse me, on behalf of the debtors. Um, Your Honor, I, I think we probably should keep that hearing uh, date on calendar. Um, the good news is, Your Honor, with respect to the Senza Kenmore uh, sale process is in December, you did um, uh, approved bidding procedures, and uh, we have received one other qualified bidder, so um, we are very likely going to have an option, and the option date has moved from what was in um, the original timeline uh, because it was somehow set for a Saturday, which I think was inadvertent, but um, it's been moved to the prior Friday on um, March 1st, so we're uh, likely going to be having an option on March 1st, and then it would be good to hold that date on March 4th. Um, to have a hearing on the, on the sale. Um, there is an additional item with respect to the Senza Kenmore sale, Your Honor, just to bring your uh, attention to and preview for you, is that there um, are five uh, documents that I guess we'll call leases, but um, whether and to what extent they are leases that ever went into effect with respect to Senza Kenmore um, uh, is a little bit ambiguous. However, um, neither the, the stocking horse buyer nor the um, other qualified bidder has interest in any of the, uh, you know, any, uh, when I say five leases, there's five different lots that, that were contemplated um, for development there, but the development never occurred. So um, in the interest of uh, making sure we, uh, you know, have that item cleared up, we are going to be very shortly filing a motion to reject whatever interest the debtor has in those leases and having that be set for um, on a, a shortened time frame for the March hearing date, uh, the March 4th hearing date as well. Um, so you'll likely see a motion on that fairly fairly shortly. So that's the update on Senza Kenmore. Um, a couple of other real property updates. Your Honor, court entered an order approving the sale of the Second Street and Pioneer Village properties. Uh, closing has been delayed a bit on the buyer side for that, but we are hoping to close those sales uh, sometime soon, within the next week or so, week or two, at which point. Um, uh, that we'll be able to bring those money, monies into the estate. And if for some reason we can't, then we will, of course, uh, possibly be, be back to square one on those properties, but we're optimistic at this point. And then uh, the only other real property uh, update is that we have the general sale procedures motion that we filed, obviously not for today, but uh, the objection deadline runs on that uh, in about a week and a half on, on March 4th by our calculation. And we have been in contact with Mr. Geyer um, trying to work through some issues to make the USC comfortable with that motion. Um, but that is uh, really the uh, general real property sale update we do anticipate. We have been uh, exchanging drafts of uh, purchase and sale agreement on one other uh, real property, uh, one of our undeveloped real property uh, pieces that we may be filing uh, a motion for sale procedures, or excuse me, bidding procedures on that as well. So that's just to give you a preview of what might be coming in the coming days or, or weeks. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Trevor. Can I ask if the five putative lessees on relating to uh, Senza Kenmore had general notice of the debtor's motion to sell that property free and clear? They did. Okay. I, I believe, obviously, I guess we'll see if anyone objects and what issues might be raised, but I believe there's a Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals case arising out of a dispute in Montana that expressly allows the sale free and clear of a putative leasehold interest. So, um, I may need to refresh on that case depending on um, what's raised, but I'm pleased to hear they have noticed and we'll see uh, if there's any objection. Um, so I understand. Uh, thank you, Mr. Trotsky. Okay. Um, so I saw in the status report the debtors would like a hearing set um, the week of March 25th, which we can do 
We currently have on calendar a hearing, um, tentatively an in-person hearing for March 12th. I don't know if we still need that hearing date. There hasn't been anything filed yet. Um, my thought is maybe it makes sense to push that March 12th date to say out, out two weeks to March 25th, but um, if the debtors would like to keep both the 12th and something the week of uh, the 25th, we can do that as well. So, um, Mr. Cosmo. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I, I believe Mr. Gruley was going to handle scheduling. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Gruley. Uh, happy to, Your Honor. Uh, for the record, Julian Gruley. Your Honor, uh, we discussed a bit uh, scheduling uh, with uh, on the debtor side and with the, with the committee. Our, our proposal, Your Honor, would be, I think it'd be useful to keep uh, the March 12th date. Um, I would suggest that we uh, switch that to a telephonic uh, on the on the bus date and status conference date would probably make sense. Um, and then I pulled you know folks availability for an in-person hearing, and I think the week of the 25th, the best day, subject of course to the court calendar, would be an in-person date on March 27th. So sort of flip the 312 date to a omnibus date instead of conference by telephone and be in court with, with some with some time reserved uh, for an in-person hearing on the 27th of March. Okay. Um, that's what would I say 10 o'clock a.m. on March 27th for? Yes. Thank you, John. I have uh, one other matter set that will uh, get moved to a different day. So um, we will put on calendar uh, so that minute entries for today's hearing will reflect that the March 12th um, on the hearing and status conference is being switched uh, to telephonic only. And then we will put on my calendar um, an in-person hearing on uh, Wednesday, March 27th, starting at 10 o'clock. Thank you, John. Okay. Um, anything uh, further to cover today, um, Ms. Stewart? No. Thank you, Your Honor, for your time. Okay. Uh, anything further from anyone else on the phone today? All right. Uh, well, thank you all for your time today. I did see the order on the O'Melveny employment application was uploaded, so we will get that process, and um, we will likely speak again on uh, March 4th regarding the 10 to 10 more sale motion. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of the day. We're adjourned.